Hello there. Now, there's an argument that can be made, and in my opinion, it might be a little bit of recency bias, but the last episode of The Sopranos, episode 14 of season 6, stage 5, might be one of, if not the best episode of the series thus far. Now, I know we're on the final home stretch. There could be some bangers potentially coming up that will beat that episode. But like I said, that episode was a phenomenal episode of television. Now, I got the WWE belt here for three reasons. Because that episode deserves the WWE belt. Number two, WrestleMania is in an hour. So, WrestleMania Night 2 is in an hour. So, I'm getting this reaction in before that. And number three... It's because I'm the motherfucking fucking boss of these reactions. What's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law and film student in here from Sydney, Australia. Shooting is shot. And today, we are up to episode 15 of The Sopranos Season 6. This one is titled, Remember When. Let's get into the reaction. Let's absolutely have some fun with this thing. Let's absolutely smash it. Let's go. The last episode actually gave me so many copyright issues. I've got it through copyright at the moment, but it's not the best quality. That's the problem. And I hope you guys can forgive me for that. Um, it got blocked about seven or eight times yesterday. I was re-editing, uploading, re-editing, uploading, re-editing, uploading. Lucky I had WrestleMania Night 1 on yesterday, so I had that to sort of like keep me going while I was frustrated. <laughs> got a call from Sergeant Danny over in Newark, PD. Yeah, and... Hey, oh, are doing some digging over by Brantford Avenue. Is that a callback to the Godfather with the plant tree right there? And when Don Corleone died in sort of like the plant garden, I remember. Wasn't that tomato plant? I, I, I could be, could be tripping here. I could be tripping. Willie Overall. When he had the heart attack. Labor Day, nineteen eighty-two. Twenty-five years, T. Possible there's nothing left. There'll be bones, teeth. What are we gonna do? A blast from the past. Toothbrushes. Call you in a few days on the alternate cell. Any emergencies, call Sill or Bobby. And if you need more cash, call me. <laughs> I know the drill, Tony. You know, it's not like I want a trip to Paris. Why are we throwing shots there, Carmela? Okay, le 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 she had her trip to Paris. Fair enough. I like how poorly got the similar white shoes to um, Johnny Sack. And obviously we have... Razor. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, uh... I can buy whatever I need. You make sure you wear your sunblock. It's not it. A little gambling charge, that's all. It's gonna be fine. It's just, you know, better safe than sorry. I know, it's just... This is what life is still like at our age. My tomatoes are just coming in. You're not that old. Like, why, why are we acting like this season's the most depressing, man? Everyone's aging. Yeah, it's just sad. Yeah. Like, you seem good, Junior, I gotta say. <laughs> Fuck does that mean? I'm fucking incarcerated, for Christ's sake. Don't let him take my plate, kid. That guy looks familiar, too. Was he in Rush Hour? The guy sitting next to Uncle Ju? Was he the bleached guy in Rush Hour 1? I think it was. Make sure there's enough so everybody can buy in. <laughs> Junior rolling back the days. Organizing an executive game at the medical facility. You know some of them ain't allowed this shit. Gets them all around. I could lose my job. Stick up out us. I already gave you my watch. Don't count my money, nigga. You make it 500% of these motherfuckers. He using that envelope money well. Stay a few away from the door. Today we got Coca Colas. Fuck was I just saying? Oh. Soda, Junior. What soda? Right, the Coke. The real kind, not the diet shit. Ice cold, <laughs> five bucks. <laughs> Plus we got Snickers, Kit Kats, and Sprees. Also five. Uh, I'll take some Sprees. Okay, Isn't it sad yeah. that he's taking advantage of these people by doing this game? Like. This is nice, huh? <laughs> Little road trip, just you and me. <laughs> All things considered, of course. <laughs> it's like the old days. 
Remember driving around with that prick in the trunk looking for a spot? <laughs> what was it like a week before AJ was born, right? No, metal. Now she's gonna be a doctor. Remember we took it to Lugas after? Me, Puss, Rafi? <laughs> This is like the most civil Tony and Paulie have been in a while. Like, blast from the past, you know, getting along well with each other, it seems. Chevy Chase. What ever happened to him? Let me ask you something. Okay, I think Tony's a little bit fed up. You mentioned Ralph before. A few years ago, we had that beef with Johnny Sack. He made a crack about Ginny. Huge fucking mole on her ass or some shit. Yeah. Who the fuck would tell Johnny about that joke? How should I know? <laughs> okay. And the whole mood just deflated. <laughs> Somebody was in prison talking. Message over and over. George, what you got? Grandpa rocks. Your hand. He's got Alzheimer's. Help him for Christ's sake. Harry Jacks. Guy comes home with a bouquet of flowers for his wife. I guess I'll have to spread my legs now, <laughs> Why, he asks. Don't you have a vase? <laughs> he running back to feach days. <laughs> Telling jokes. Slits his wrists in a faculty lounge. After he stabbed the dean. <laughs> At least some of us know when we need help. Get the fuck out of here, you <laughs> Mother <Fungu. laughs> It's sad, but I like, like, Junior's just... What did the blind man say when he passed the fish market? What do we say about this? Well, it's a friendly game. Corrado, it's too stressful. L look at him. He's not even playing. <laughs> Come on, guys, let's wrap it up. <laughs> ah, you <yeah>, snitch. <laughs> There's a rat. girl today at pet therapy. How'd she keep her coat so shiny? The Don running back the old days, baby. Getting a little taste of what it was like <laughs> again. <laughs> running the executive games, telling the jokes. Sending people packing. He made me walk home that night. Eleven fucking miles from Essex Fells back to Newark. I'm from Essex Fells. A rich kid, huh? <laughs> Warren said I should get my buttons back uh, on account of we weren't really supposed to be gambling. Tell Warren he can fuck himself. <laughs> problem with that? Tell him to come see me. Come see the boss. <laughs> the boss is in his, and he's conciliated right here. <laughs> you believe this guy? <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, this is so sad, but <laughs> at the same time, it's Junior running back the old days. And I like... I love how the past, like, the last two episodes, it seems like, obviously, this episode's titled Remember When, so it's a blast from the past. It's affecting Junior, this blast from the past sort of theme, remembering when, um, rolling back the old days, but at the same time, it's affecting Tony and Paulie. And I liked how last episode, the concept, I don't know if you guys agree with me because I haven't uploaded the reaction yet, but I talked about the concept of legacy and, you know, what you're going to leave behind and how much that sort of thought of legacy impacted every character in the episode um la uh, uh, last episode and i feel like with this episode i like how the themes they kind of explore affects all the characters as well it's not like we're just focusing on tony um it's the sopranos baby it's the family it's the whole crime family and it's like i love the way the one theme focuses on how everyone thinks about that theme if that makes sense like it's, it's just really good stuff and yeah like i said this episode looks like it's gonna be a blast from the past to remember when tony and paulie reminiscing that might bring up old wounds we'll see about that how that's gonna go um and then obviously with uncle june here once in third grade i got a 96 on my spelling test highest mark in the class i was so proud i brought it home to show my dad what happened to the other four points he says <laughs> fuck you fuck you Does this guy have, is, I, I'm not sure what condition he, is it Tourette's? No. UZFM, Fredericksburg, your home for classic rock, 96.9. I got the GTA radio. <laughs> we should stop. Fuck off, Virginia. You remember that place, uh, the dive with the fucking massage beds? It's in Culpeper, Virginia. The Haven Air. Ah. 
We met those 16 year old hillbilly who was near the taxi stand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want the old days? Let's go there. We'll get a room, bucket of ice in the machine, bottle of scotch, order up a couple steaks. <laughs> now you're fucking talking. Now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> That place probably been knocked down. This place is it new? I think maybe I don't know. There was a motel on this spot though, right? The Haven Air. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Fucking guy. Hey, things change, man. It's been like 25 years. <laughs> Mr. Spears, you're all set. Two Britney Kingler, Spears. <laughs> one night checking out tomorrow. Six to ten, we offer a complimentary buffet breakfast in the courtesy room off the lobby. All right, a couple of steaks. Sir. With baked potatoes. Wraps and salads only after 11. <laughs> Buckingham's is still open, though. You could get some nachos. What kind of hotel is this, man? Never been five miles out of Newark. Anyway, I'm driving. We get pulled over. State trooper with the hat, fucking sunglasses. I got no driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> sure Why wouldn't he? <laughs> this is the deep fucking south we're in. And we're Italian. I turned to your dad. What do I tell this prick? Relax, he says. Tell him your cousin's on the job. Gives me a southern sounding name. Guy comes over. Oh, my cousin's a state trooper too, I tell him. Maybe you know him. What's his name? Bonnie Fife. Pow! <laughs> <laughs> the prick gives me a shot. I don't know what the fuck is. Your dad's fucking pissing himself. I mean, I never watch TV. How the fuck do I know, right? So what happened? Your dad had to dupe the guy a hundred fucking dollars. Probably a month's salary in those days. You know, I remember you around that time. When I was bad, my dad used to threaten me he was going to get Uncle Paulie to come get me. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jenny boy, eh? He trusted you enough to give him the Willie Overall thing. And you were what? 24? 22. So there you go, then. A <laughs> hundred dollars. <laughs> Who am I paying for the tailpipe? Just like Johnny. The muffler still under warranty. Oh. Oh, said, Yeah. Nice talking to you. Yeah, you too. Enjoy Miami. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? What? You tell some fucking gooby your life story? You're supposed to be laying low. I'm gonna grab some Danish for the road. Well, they're looking a little bit miserable this episode. Like, at points. Like, he's not his usual energetic self. Like, you have spurts here and there, but... Hey, like his mother. Remember though at the restaurant? Remember at the restaurant with the girls and they huddled everything? Shit in your pants, Don. And they had to share the scones or the rolls between each other. <laughs> because his mum's friends took more. <laughs> Visiting by the zoo. Don't feed the chidrules. <laughs> um, uh, how was church? It's fine. It's good. You remember Mr. Soprano? Corrado, please. Hello, my dear. <laughs> how are you today? I'd complain, but who'd listen? They have me on some new medication. It makes me salivate. I'll leave you two to visit. I have some letters to answer. He's a good boy, this one. Thank you. I have this new medication they put me on. It makes me salivate. Whole time at MIT, you told me, get out and make friends. Now I finally do learn to assert myself a little. Suddenly, that's a negative. Guy's a bright kid. Check it MIT. In. Didn't know he had a bright future, but just mentally, maybe something just anger issues, stuff like that. Or Shell. I'll get a settled then. Hey, it's not good. Feds found a body, skeleton. They tentatively ID it as a guy. Oh fuck. Yeah, try and relax, huh? How's Paulie holding up? George, are holding up fine. You want to shut the fuck up? <laughs> What the fuck's you gotta worry about anyway? Scenario like this, the feds ain't interested in him, believe me. Look, I love the guy, it's just... You know how he is. Yeah, believe me, I hear you. What else? Let me think. Um, I looked in on Calm, and she's okay. All right, thanks. Call me if you hear anything. That's all right, Joey. Use your hat! <laughs> what do you do with those, Jimmy? Photographers <laughs> the man who kept Tony Soprano? Jeez, them motherfuckers go right on eBay. Oh my gosh. Everyone hustling. <laughs> Come on, outside. That was our deal. 
You want to keep getting them sodas? Sick fucking world. Damn, everybody just as bad as each other in this place. What the heck, man? For you. Oh, wow. I got one for Christina and Gia, too. Thanks. Where's the DVD? <laughs> Cleaver merch. That never occurred to me. That's right, well, Beansy in Miami. Hey, as long as you're here. I shall go. Fucking shit. Still, oh, uh, that's poorly <laughs> with his biceps. <laughs> Mickey Pinto took that in 1963. Look at that hair. Mm. <laughs> Handsome fucking guy, eh? That wristband, a leather thing. I remember getting one just like it. Me and all my friends wanted to be a tough guy, just like him. <laughs> that big one, that's your uncle Junior and your old man in front of Satriani. Oh, that's gangster. That's gangster. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. It's the BRH. We're just talking about that. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have my daughter scan them into the computer so I can get a couple of copies for you. Yeah. Oh, hey. oh, that's my wife. I gotta take this. No, stay, stay. It's all right. Come on. Uh, I gotta empty my bag anyway. Hey, honey, sweetie, how's everything? Gia says hi, guys. Hello, Gia. <laughs> oh, my mom. He pisses in a bag now. Jesus Christ, fucking kill me now. Ooh. Supporting them with a huge warehouse covering. Everybody getting old, man. Everybody getting old. <laughs> you didn't make a move in North Jersey without this one up your ass. <laughs> I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Want to talk about stand up, guys? Oh. Sorry, Beats. Oh, stand up. Oh, oh. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. Hey, remember that yokel at the feast mounted off to your cousin? <laughs> this maniac <laughs> threw a vat of hot oil right from the Zeppelin stand on this person. <laughs> oh, my God. You pounded sugar, he would have been done. <laughs> <laughs> and, Tom, uh, remember when we all rented that house down the shore with the bed bugs? <laughs> Summer of 78. Carlo, Silvio. Frankie Napoli. Place up the beach. Yeah. Sonny Spence from the Bronx rented it. Uh -huh. That's where that hippie kid mysteriously drowned during that party. <laughs> I don't know if... I was about to say, I think Tony is really holding it in at the moment. Um, in terms of, like, balling up all his frustrations about Paulie's blabbering and mouthing off. And they've had Paulie do that numerous times this episode. At Strangers at the hotel. Um, the Like, the service workers or... Uh, the hotel... Freaking, I don't know. Ah, oh, you get what I mean. The hotel workers, um, and he's doing it now in front of the girls. And obviously, Tony brought up the Ginny joke this episode. And I don't know if he's making assumptions that it was Paulie that did that initially two years ago, and he, he might hold a grudge against it from two years ago and bring it back this episode. But Tony is, I don't know, he hasn't done anything this episode, but I feel like he's a ticking time bomb and he's about to go off, like eventually. Like he holding it in. Gandolfini hey, has nailed it this episode. Look at him. Look at him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's your tea. Like all they need to insert the heavy breathing, and we set. Remember when it's the lowest form of conversation. <laughs> Is that true? Do you guys agree with that? That hit. That line hit deep. That line hit. The lowest form of conversation. What does that say about the now? What does that say about today? Nice gravy, huh? Yeah. Anyway, your taste. That's Patricia. You mind? Well, I have a feeling this guy Go ahead. ain't going to make it out of this table. Now, I'll start by making a fold on each corner. We know what Phil Leotardo is on at the moment. Touche, Captain Blood. <laughs> what do you want? If you'd move, perhaps I could reach the chest set. And if I don't, what the fuck are you going to do to me? You don't intimidate me. Corrado. So, you take the mountain. You're lucky she's here, you little prick. <laughs> Naturally. You're only tough when there's an authority figure nearby so things don't go too far. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Corrado! <laughs> Ah! Get him! Get him! Ah! 
Listen. You describe Mr. Soprano as the aggressor? Is he generally a troublemaker? <laughs> nah, cool. He got this guy in his pocket. That's a lovely watch you're wearing. Is that vintage? He just gets paid well at the medical facility. Why am I the only caregiver being interrogated here? It wouldn't happen to be because of the color of my skin now, would it? Yes. Thank you for your cooperation. Play the race you card. Go. Come on. <laughs> Listen, we need to continue the prize. <laughs> Why does this woman here look like the girl from Despicable Me? Like Gru's wife, just an older version. Yeah, I need a bridge. She got that face. <laughs> 200K. What's a pickup? Then at 4 o'clock game, I'm chasing the money. I picked a 49 inch minus 2. And... Now, fucker, you don't want to hear this. It's been this way last couple months, though. This too shall pass. Uh, thanks, Anytime. Pick up Hesh, man. I feel like Hesh is the only one gonna get out of this unscathed. I love Tony in the bed shots, bro. Flashbacks to season 6A. How do you know Peter? Oh, Peter. Fiji? An old friend. For a neighborhood. So the other guy, the one with the um, white hair thingies, what's his name again? Paulie. Right. What is he, like, your best friend? You say that? I just figured the way he was talking. Honestly, I thought he was your dad at first. <laughs> when I wished he was. <laughs> he, he used to work for my dad. I know, he told me. Oh, no, he mouthed enough. No. <laughs> That's not a good letter, man, from the vice president's sort of secretary, probably. See, Bill Pills last couple of days. I got no pep. Oh, that'll change. There's a slight adjustment period. But I'm sleeping all the time now. I can't focus. Just give it some time. You'll feel a lot better, and your memory will improve, too. They're trying to sedate him with the new pills, I reckon. You know, that's bullshit, right? They're trying to numb you out. There we go. Because <laughs> of what you did to the professor. Yo, that professor had it coming. I swear. He, he was like dumb mouthing off in the episode with Syl and, and, and Carla. <laughs> What's on 84 being said, right? Well, 55 would work, but that includes shipping to Jersey. We look like fucking UPS. Look, you send a truck up north, we send it back loaded. I got a line on air mattresses, pool toys. I like to run a load out with... Uh, Caritas, it's a French shampoo. Twenty dollars a bottle retail. <laughs> now you get five percent after sale, but that's gonna involve a little trust. Tommy, All right. We're looking for a long-term relationship. Right? We'll be calling. All right. Okay, deal. <laughs> <laughs> Stop fucking pushing! Yo, stop bumping dickheads out there! <laughs> uh, he didn't take. He swapped the pills out. <laughs> <laughs> they work in their little schemes, man. He's my friend, but Jesus, what a fucking yak you're on. Yep, up, 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 up. <laughs> He tells me, don't say nothing to nobody. He's got prostate. I say, sure. He tells everybody. <laughs> he was always like That's that. That's poorly, man. <laughs> was Gary fucking Cooper. You forget. One time, I fell asleep while he was on the phone. I wake up 20 minutes later, and he was still going. <laughs> I, I like the sort of storytelling in terms of, like, Paulie being that father figure Tony never had. And Tony constantly being conflicted about the thoughts of his father in this show. 
Um, and even though he, uh, Johnny Soprano and Livia are gone, how much of an everlasting impact they had on Tony and this character, we, this, this fictional character who's so complex and has so much, or like, there's so much to talk about with him in terms of like why he acts the way he does and his thought process, especially with the sessions of Melfi. Um, I just, I just love that. I love when you can have a character so layered that it goes back to the past and you see the actions of his father or his mother rub off on him then you have the little flashback sequences in episodes throughout later like throughout the seasons um i just i just love that type of stuff i i just really enjoy it and you had sort of um i remember in the episode um soprano home movies with um and i haven't uploaded it yet so i don't know what you guys' thoughts are on it but when bobby talked about his father and his father sort of you know uh teaching bobby um a little bit or giving like a moral compass a moral code to not kill individuals and tony maybe was a little bit jealous of that um and then you had this episode even uh uncle june talking about his father and you know how he looked up to him and i feel like tony never has anything good to say about his father especially or it's only from others and you had that poorly say at this episode um and even tony say like um this episode, like something nice about Paulie, I almost wish he was, I almost thought he did about Paulie being that father figure to him. Um, and it's just interesting, that recurring theme. Tony has never something good to say about his father or his mother. Um, and it only comes from like external sources, um, if that makes sense. I mean, he has defended his father's legacy a little bit in like sessions with Melfi. And I could be wrong to the extent he defends his father's legacy. But uh, I feel like he never has something good to say about him. Like, it, yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, it concerns me, lately. Nah, come on, huh? Hey, people live alone, they get like that. It's sad. And I'm leaving for my card game. You two okay? Dinner was great, hon. Anytime you knew that. Thank you. And I also love the interchanging cuts this episode when Tony was getting ready at his house and then Paulie getting ready at his house. And obviously, Tony had Carmella packing his bags. Paulie was doing it himself. Um, and it just goes to show, again, I've talked about um, uh, multiple times, Paulie not having that someone in his life and he's growing old and lonely. And he's got no one to leave sort of like his legacy behind with or like um no one to root for in life like in terms of like you know he's giving money away to um meadow honor to finn tell it came from uncle uh uncle paulie like that was that was such a cool moment in the show that was hilarious when he found out finn was dating meadow and paulie's a person that's always looked up to tony you know with the napoleon like painting yes okay um i'm just talking about the game situation i always say no one's ever good in this show like no they're all pricks they're all bad people but in terms of like talking about the mafia game and the lifestyle they choose to leave uh to live Paulie's always been um in terms of like a top earner a stand-up guy in terms of the game i'm talking about and yeah he's a bit mouthy here and there but who hasn't been mouthy who hasn't stepped out of line every once in a while like you're being you know a bit uh, tony's being a little bit picky about paulie yapping 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 when look how many chances he's given to chris and look what he's done like it's a great girl you got there the way she stood by you now you see that's what paulie doesn't got i just said that now i'm speaking to your point he's got no wife i said that a couple episodes no ago he's got no steady income stream beansy except for barone which is coming to an end oh, okay so he's not earning as much anymore legit income you're vulnerable to the feds. I think you're worrying for nothing, Tony. Things are going great. Finally. Means you're living well, Miami, man. Maybe I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. All I know is Paulie got the area as a stand-up guy. I said that! Have you ever really been put to the test? Brother. You know, he had this painting of me in his house. I was all dressed up like a fucking general. <laughs> it makes it look like I watched this I scene before that. I just spoke, but I haven't. I thought it was a fucking joke. I don't think it was. He loves you, Tom. You're all he's got. You, the guys, and his image. There we go. That thing about legacy again. I love him, too. He always did. 
Hey, Sue. I'm here with Bobby. He just got a call from Jenna. Who? Oh. Karen's sister. Up to the courthouse. Oh, yeah. And? Are you sitting down? Just for <laughs> oh, shit. Jackie April. What? You heard me. Larry told him J.A. was solely responsible for the death of a certain African-American person. You're in. Congratulations, Anthony. Yeah, well. You gotta wonder what's next. And Jackie April's dead. Yeah, but for tonight, right. Huh? All right. Uh, thanks. Told the dead know. man takes the fall for a dead man. Dead men tell no tales. <laughs> we got fired to the Caribbean. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> We're off the hook on this Willie overall thing. <laughs> oh, thank God, that's fucking beautiful. <laughs> <sighs> no, we ought to do. We ought to treat ourselves before we leave. <laughs> Just thinking maybe we do some sport fishing. You serious? Yeah, what are you kidding? The fucking marlin they got out here? What about a boat? They rented still got. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Hey, I'm getting flashbacks to, to pussy here, for, man. He asks. Two fags decide they want a baby. So they jack off in a cup, use the sperm to get a lady friend that ass pregnant. Nine months later, they go to the hospital. They see all the babies in the nursery. Look, they say. Our baby's the sweetest one. He's not even crying at all. Uh, God damn it, what the fuck is it? Oh. Now he's not crying, the nurse says. Just wait till we take the pacifier out of his ass. <laughs> <All> right, yeah. <laughs> oh, he pissed his pants. Oh, fuck me. Accident! Accident! God <laughs> fucking damn it! Almost as oh. if he's like the class clown here. Oh, Jesus Christ on the cross. I'm an old man. It was an accident, for Christ's sake. You're on Ditropan, specifically to avoid incontinence. Not to mention Selexa, which should be curtailing your aggressiveness. I'm taking my medication. Ask Hormel you don't believe me. Jamil. He's been let go. Oh. Mr. Soprano, there's a mutual trust among the staff and our patients regarding treatment. That means you have a choice. You can either wear the pens while you wait transfer to another facility, or you can take your medication as prescribed. Yeah, Gerardo. Time for your medicine. Yeah, this guy is not gonna let his eyes off him. Where the fuck is my iPod? Every day is your iPod card. Just stop causing a commotion. I think he finally realized Corrado is succumbing to this place. He showed a little bit of weakness there. He's not rebelling. <laughs> Does the guy I look up to? I should piss myself again. But I did the thing. They're muscling me. What do you want me to tell you? I could have gotten in trouble. You don't even give a shit. The mafia using people, man. <laughs> they fired Hormel. Jamil? Fuck him. You got me. Maybe tomorrow, kid. I don't know. I'm tired. This guy has been really good this episode. Ooh, what a shot. That guy has been really good this episode for like a one-off character or like a sort of cameo appearance. Old Ironside. <laughs> Does Paulie, I don't know, deep down think he might be going into early retirement here? Oh, yep, we're thinking about pussy again. Here we go. Listen, he has every right to be worried like this. What an episode that was. Fun house. S'il vous plaît. <laughs> Can't be coincidence that he called him Anthony, right? And his name's Anthony. <laughs> like... <laughs> Ah, oh, this is them funhouse flashbacks, man. This is them funhouse flashbacks.
Yeah, this this them fun house flashbacks, man. This them fun house flashbacks. Great callback, great callback. And sort of like same type of setting, same type of mood. Again, typical Sopranos, um, trademark Sopranos here. The focus on diegetic sound only, um, you know, with the boat rocking as well. But it's different type of weather. I believe in the Funhouse episode, it was much more, um, the weather was much more overcast. And here there's a little bit of sun shining and uh, there's cloudy, um, but I feel like there's a bit of clear skies. But I don't know if Paul, this is the end of Paulie. I doubt, but it could be the end of Paulie, but I, I doubt it. Paulie. <laughs> But since you're eating it, maybe it should be rigatoni alla Tony. <laughs> Tony forcing them smiles, man. Oh, my God. Are you not hungry? My fucking stomach. Oh, no. Cleaver. 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 <laughs> and when you went down below, I thought I saw a whale. Oh, shit. Let me dig a Jenny sack. <laughs> a joke Ralph made about her that was some funny shit. No matter what John said. He trying to get humor, right? He trying to yeah. get it out of him. I heard you took an office job. Chub insurance. <laughs> well you told him, right? It's no big deal. I can hardly resist. Very funny tone, I don't know. Yeah, he was a funny prick, that Ralph. Gladiator fixation. <laughs> Time to hit Georgie in the eye with the chain. <laughs> I'd have loved to see John's face when he heard that crack. Oh, he's fucking holy to now because he didn't fuck other women. It's the broomstick up his ass. <laughs> Tourette syndrome. Seriously. Hey, 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 you gotta take or something. I don't know. It's like some people grind their teeth. When I'm nervous, tense or something. Have you had yourself check Tony for being a sociopath? I don't think so. Come on, you told John about that joke, right? <laughs> it wasn't me, Tom. No? That's right. Again with the pussy thing. It's like he wants a hundred percent proof. <laughs> you wanna drink? Alright. Stewards. Talk about setting the scene, man. How's this scene right here gonna have more tension than horror films? See, this is Tony at his most dangerous right here. Think fast. Jesus, no, fuck that hurt. <laughs> Take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia. Oh, didn't they make? Didn't they make the trip to Virginia this episode too? <laughs> There's a time and place, Anthony. Oh! Hey, hey, hey! Time out! Time out! Time out! Stand up. Yeah, work on them biceps. Work on them biceps. <laughs> Who's at the door? That's crazy. I Sonoma from Paulie. <laughs> The Electra semi-automatic chrome espresso machine. See, I know... Oh, 
Tony was... I don't know why Tony took it that deep in terms of like throwing it back to the Ginny Sack joke and him being in league with Johnny Sack back at the time and that using it as a justification to whack poorly because I feel like the rule book has been disobeyed so many times now. Like I don't even know what the rule book is anymore. Um, but that's James Gale De again, Delfini uh, at his best and that's Tony Soprano at his most dangerous in those type of scenes where he's playfully, you know, mucking around, putting those facial expressions, making you feel comfortable. And then at any moment, again, the camera work as well, tilting down to the fish, um, the sort of the, the bait, the cleaver as well, the knife, um, just all those weapons that he could use against poorly. And you think to yourself, you're having those flashback episode, uh, flashbacks to Funhouse, and is it, is, is it really Paulie's time? And then again, it, 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 that scene um, of Paulie walking into the house, you think to yourself, all right, he came home, nothing really happened. But the lighting as well, the lighting change to make it all dark and gloomy, walking into the kitchen and seeing pussy, and you think to yourself, oh, has Paulie been killed off here? Is this sort of like an aid um, daydream sort of situation here? Uh, it was very similar to that, in my opinion, where the show is making it a bit ambiguous oh, is this poorly in sort of like this purgatory or like heaven-like place, hell-like place with pussy in the kitchen? Um, very, very, very great. Like very, very, very great sort of like um, TV right there. And sort of like just, just making the audience feel a little bit of doubt for a sec. And then obviously having Paulie wake up in the bed um, with his dreams and then toughening him back up again. And then sending the goodies to Carmella with the broken coffee machine from the beginning of the episode. Um, and Tony walking down the stairs. Um, oh, it's so good. It's so good. And obviously the consequences that comes with whacking Paulie. Like Tony's got to think about that too. Like, well, it's going to make him look so weak in front of everyone else. And he they talk about this episode about, you know, poorly slowing down in terms of how much he's earning, him hiding the money from the government. He's not earning enough to do that. Um, and that can all be straightened out maybe with the talk. Um, but Paulie is getting on. He's getting older. And he's even worried about that as well. Um, this episode with how he sees Beansy pissing in a uh, bag. Uncle June pissing himself as well. Um, all these oldies. There's a there's a generation slowly fading away and moving on. We've seen that with Johnny Sack and things like that. So again, the theme of legacy this episode and Paulie looking up to Tony and Beansy said it right. You're all he's got, Tony, and you're all like all the boys. That's all he's got uh, for him to be remembered as. He's got no wife. He's got no kids. Um, and for all of Paulie's flaws and listen, he's a he's a murderer. He's every like. For all his flaws, in terms of what he's done for the game, he's done a lot. He's done a lot. He's been a good soldier. Uh, Tony, this is like $2,000. What is wrong with that man? What's wrong with him? Nothing. It's guys like him that allows our whole lifestyle here. <laughs> Take me over to Jeanette's house. Oh, this guy is getting whacked. This car blowing up or some shit. Oh, oh, one-eyed Willy. Oh, damn. Oh, we're dropping the guns with all that DNA evidence? We better have gloves on. Hey, flashbacks to Mikey, anyone? Getting shot in the eye? No, no, Mikey. Um, Brendan, 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 sorry. Yeah, let me see. 72, 73, back in the feet, Lamont. Chris's friend in the bathtub. I'm on a roll. I mean, I haven't lost a bet in fucking months. Hey, Colin, you see this shit? Skip. Hey. Looks like Phil's the main guinea over there now, huh? Anyway, we're at Maxwell's Plum. Take this money down to Old Caruso on the corner and put it all against the Jets. My brother was just recovering from rheumatic fever. He couldn't want to. I don't see why Tony has a problem with Paulie blabbering on too much and telling jokes. Like, I know he could potentially slip up now in his old age with him telling the stories and remember when is the lowest form of conversation. But still, like, the man just telling jokes in front of the boys. Like, like Beansy put it, he's all he's got in life. He's all he's got to tell these stories to. He's got no kids. He's got no wife. Yo, Barnacle Boy looking down and beating with them Velma glasses, man. 
I love how the last two episodes as well have sort of ended. Um, I got to go back and rewatch episode 14 because it's been a couple days. But the last few episodes have not ended with like a final shot of Tony. It's ended um, with a couple old heads who have done a lot in the game. Phil Leotardo serving 20 years. Um, and him sort of, you know, wanting to stamp his authority and cement his legacy. And then Uncle June there, um, sort of like... Um, an individual who you've got in Phil who wants to leave an everlasting legacy. Um, and then you see the sort of um, the downfall of Uncle June right there at the end of this episode. Sort of like the juxtaposition of the two men. But what, I don't know if they're similar age, but along the lines of um, Phil Leotardo wanting to go out on a blast and cement his legacy. And then Uncle June sort of like legacy and how that continues to derail. And I love that. I love that about this show. Um, very, very depressing back-to-back -back episodes. Um, I feel like last episode was much more depressing, but this episode, yet again, um, another, another bleak and dark sort of, like, um, turn in what seems like a, a rabbit hole of a, of a final season. It seems like this is a dark tunnel, and there seems to be no light at the end of this tunnel. Like, whatever, whatever beacon Tony saw in the distance with the lighthouse, I know he has no sense of direction, but at least that bitch had light, okay? This is a lighthouse that's not working. There is no light for the ships to see. There is no land here. We're, we're treading dark waters at night in the middle of the ocean, and there was no land whatsoever. There is no hope. <laughs> that's what this season is given off. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy my reaction yet again. As always, it's been your boy Lee Moses. What a beggar. Take care. God bless. Peace.